So today I'm wearing my vector shirt because we're going to be talking about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Now the definition of an eigenvector is this statement right here, where it says for some matrix A, V is an eigenvector if applying the matrix has the same effect as scaling the vector by some constant number lambda. So let's look at a simpler example here. If we have the matrix 2, 0, 0, 3, what would be the eigenvectors of this matrix? Well, one eigenvector would be the vector 1, 0. And the reason I know that is because if you multiply 1, 0 by this matrix, the result that you'll get is just going to be 2 times 1 on the top, so you have 2, 0. And 2, 0 is the same as 2 times 1, 0. So we apply the matrix to 1, 0, and we get the result that the vector is scaled by some constant value. So that's what an eigenvector is. Now we're going to talk about how exactly you would get to the eigenvector. In order to do that, we're going to do a little bit of equation manipulation to our equation right here. So to start out, let's subtract lambda v on both sides. So we get av minus lambda v equals 0. And what we want to do is factor out this v, this vector, so we can just look at a and lambda. But a is a matrix, and lambda is just a number. So we can't just do a matrix minus a number. That doesn't make any sense. What we're going to do instead is rewrite lambda v as lambda i times v, just like this, where i is the identity matrix. And this, again, remember, the identity doesn't do anything. So this will have the exact same effect as lambda v. But now, because lambda i is a matrix, we're able to factor out v. So we get that a minus lambda i times v equals 0. And now we want to ask ourselves, when is this equation true? So if we want to solve this equation, we know that one solution is going to be just letting v be the 0 vector. Because if v is just 0, 0, 0, 0 all the way down, multiplying it by any matrix will still get us back to 0. But in fact, the 0 vector is so boring that we don't even count it as an eigenvector, because then it's an eigenvector of everything, and that doesn't really help us very much. So we want solutions where v is not the 0 vector. Now, I want to consider the following. Let's think about what would happen if the matrix A minus lambda i had an inverse, if its inverse exists. One thing that we could do in that case is multiply both sides of this equation by A minus lambda i inverse. So on the left side, the inverse and the matrix would cancel out. We would just get v. But on the other side, we would get A minus lambda i inverse times 0. But remember, this is just a matrix. And any matrix times the 0 vector is just going to get us the 0 vector back out. So if A minus lambda i inverse exists, we can multiply it on both sides and get that the only solution for v is the 0 vector. So we cannot have that A minus lambda i is invertible, because if it's invertible, we don't get more than one solution. And we need more than one solution to get something other than the 0 vector, since the 0 vector is always a solution. So we need to have, in fact, that A minus lambda i inverse does not exist. So how do we make sure that that's true? Well, if you look at my last video on determinants, link in the description, we talked about the fact that if the determinant of a matrix is equal to 0, then that matrix does not have an inverse. So in fact, this is how we're going to figure out the values of lambda that work for our equation. We're going to start by looking at the determinant, because if it equals 0, then we know that we don't have an inverse, and therefore v is not going to be just the 0 vector. So let's look at an example of what this means. Let's say we have the matrix A being equal to 2, 0, 1, 1. And we say find the eigenvalues of this matrix. Well, first of all, we want to figure out what A minus lambda i is equal to. And we don't know what lambda is, but we know that lambda i is going to be of the form lambda 0, 0, lambda. So we take the identity matrix and just scale everything up by lambda. Now if we do A minus lambda i, then our matrix becomes 2 minus lambda, 0, 1, 1 minus lambda. So we're just taking the entries of the first matrix, subtracting the entries of the second matrix. And remember, we want the determinant of this matrix to be 0. Now, I haven't gone over the formulas for determinants in my series, but the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix 
is going to be equal to AD minus BC, meaning we take the top left times the bottom right minus the top right times the bottom left. So for this one, the determinant of A minus lambda I is going to be equal to 2 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda, which is AD, and then BC is going to be 0 times 1, so that's just 0. This is our determinant, and we want that to equal 0. And in this case, the polynomial is already factored for us. If we want this product to equal 0, we know lambda must equal either 2 or 1. And just like that, we have found our eigenvalues. So now that we know the eigenvalues, we can go back to this equation right here and plug in our value for lambda, solve using Gauss-Jordan elimination. So let's look at lambda equals 1 as an example. We want to figure out a minus lambda i. Well, that's going to be this matrix right here, but we plug in lambda equals 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1, 0, and then 1. 1 minus 1 is, again, 0. And then we're going to augment this matrix by the 0 vector, because our goal is to solve for v. So we have this augmented matrix right here. Now, if we want to solve this, we can just do row 2 minus row 1, and that will get us to the matrix 1, 0, 0, and then 1 minus 1 is 0, so we just get a row of zeros along the bottom. And what this is telling us, if we bring it back into the idea of systems of equations, is that the x component of v, this first component, is going to be equal to 0. What is the y component? Well, it can be anything, because we don't have any information about what the y is in this system. So we can pick our y value to be anything we want. So when we define the eigenvector, we say the eigenvector v is equal to 0, 1. So we have our x value of 0 and our y value of 1. Now 0, 2 is an eigenvector, 0, 3 is an eigenvector, 0, anything is an eigenvector. But we just pick one value of y, and then there's an implicit understanding that we could multiply this by any constant, and it would still be an eigenvector with the eigenvalue of 1. So that's the basics of how to find eigenvectors and eigenvalues. You use the formula determinant of a minus lambda i equals 0 to make sure that this inverse does not exist, find your eigenvalues, and then solve for the vectors with Gauss-Jordan elimination.